Hey there viewers, welcome back to Ray of All Trades. I went yard sale shopping and found a project, I guess. I have a feeling that the motor's probably toast and there's literally one thing that's telling me that. The fuel mixture on this thing is 24 to one. You don't usually find that anywhere. You have to make that on your own. The person who said that they tried it, said that they put a little bit of uh, fuel inside the carburetor to try to start it, most people who do that usually use a carb cleaner or starting fluid or something along those lines. It needs a lot of oil on this one. This one's only 24 parts gasoline to one part oil. Most pre-mixes nowadays are going to be 50 to 1 or 40 to 1. The newer 50 to 1 ratio uh, bottles, especially synthetic ones, do say that they're capable... Uh, this wasn't on there, right? Do say that they're capable of, of being able to lubricate at lower ratios, like 24 to 1, things like that. We're talking high quality stuff, though. You know what I mean? And this thing was at a yard sale. It was super cheap. Came with a lot of, a lot of stuff. I'm not really sure what I'm going to find. But I thought it would be a cool game to try to figure out. I really don't need a tiller. But if I get it running, hey, great. If I do get it running, it says 24 to 1 here. It says 24 to 1 here. But I'm probably going to make a giant label that says caution 24 to 1 ratio on the premix. Let's see what we got. Well, there's a... Uh, doesn't appear to be anything inside there. We'll turn it over. Keeping in mind, when it's uh, 24 to 1, it's a two-stroke motor. It's utilizing, there's no, there's no oil in the sump. It's utilizing the oil that's inside the gasoline to lubricate the motor. So yeah, I hear air moving back and forth. I'm not really sure what it is, but how's the air filter look? Just going through the basics here. See if there's anything that's going to just stop me dead in my tracks. There. Fuel line is hard as a rock, so it probably wouldn't have worked anyway. Let's see. Feels like a ton of compression. Now, here's the, here's the trick, though. Does the compression go away when I pull out the spark plug? Because if you still got tons of compression after pulling out the spark plug, that means that it's... Not really compression and scored. The plug doesn't look terrible. It doesn't have a whole lot of stuff on it. Definitely a lot less compression that way. And one last thing I want to check before we get too far is I want to pull off the muffler and check the rings real fast. If all that's good, we're going to give it a try. That might not be bad. Let me get a flashlight so you guys can see too. Um, this is two stroke, right? So it doesn't really have an exhaust valve. What it has is when it comes through that second stroke, it's actually pushing the exhaust out of here. So what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the piston and you're gonna see rings coming past. All right, so there's the rings right there. So those black things right there. And we're looking for significant scoring, like engraved lines going up and down. And I really don't see that. You have to be cautious of, is it oil? making a line coming through there or is an actually uh, a scored mark. This thing might actually be okay. It's got a lot of carbon and it's really coked up, but since it runs 24 to one, it's possible they were doing it right. So feeling a little bit better about it so far. I'm gonna go ahead and put this muffler back on. I like to check those things when I remember. On a two stroke, just check to see if it's scored right off the bat because uh, for myself, what usually occurs is I'll start getting really far into it. I'll start throwing gaskets and time and effort, energy, all this other stuff, parts into it before I realize that I never checked to see if the motor is even worth saving. Right now, I've got the warm and fuzzies that it's probably worth saving because on the exhaust side anyway, it's not really scored up, meaning nobody straight gassed it or ran it, you know, um, with the wrong mixture. Let's check and see if it has spark. Let's see if I can do this. It appears to be the ignition switch is right here. So that's the on, that's off. Let's turn that on. 
And let's see if either this sparks or I jump, one of the two. I'm gonna get turned around. see a spark. Let me turn off the lights real quick and see if it changes. Make sure we get a good ground here. Now do I get a good spark? Ah, there we go. I see it now. I don't know if y'all can see it. Right down inside there. I do have a spark. It's not great, but I do have a spark. Hey, well, let's check and see if one of these Chinese sparks is a little bit hotter. Yep, that one's at least got a blue spark coming out of it, so let's try that one. Alright, so has spark. Kill switch appears to work. Not scored. I am not a proponent of this true fuel, but my local hardware store had this one gallon container on sale for uh, five bucks. And it's the wrong mixture. This is 40 parts per of gas per one part of uh, oil. So even this is too much. We're just gonna give it a try, just a little bit, just to see if it runs. A lot of people have done some test true fuel and found that it's just not what it's all cracked up to be. But I just want to put a little bit in here just to see what what happens. I anticipate that if it starts up that the thing's going to start spinning so I need to keep a handle on this. Well, she runs. Fairly confident that if it did need a carburetor rebuild, I wouldn't have got it for as cheap as I did. Let's just go ahead and go straight to the carburetor. Yes, logical would be fill it up with fuel, see what happens, but then I'm gonna have a mess of fuel on my hands, taking and changing all the fuel lines, cleaning the carburetor out, things like that. So I'm just gonna go straight in to clean the carburetor. But the motor runs, I saw those spin. So let's clean up this carburetor, see what we get. Manifold black block on the back side of the carburetor. That had the groove on the back side. Got a spring here. A vibration return spring. Oh, it's got a uh, vein. So that's air. The air of the flywheel is what's actually driving the throttle. And we're gonna change out those two fuel lines. Bottom of the carburetor on the regular nipple goes to the primer bulb. The one with the white 90 degree nipple goes to the fuel tank. Okay, there's that one. That's the impulse hole. Lines up with that. There we go. I'll get that screw out of there. Got those off. Be very careful with this vein because I'm guarantee it's fragile and it'll pop off pretty easy. So I got Torx set is what takes this whole thing apart. Let's go ahead and get some Torx drivers and start getting this thing apart. Let's 
see, that's a 10. There's an 8. There we go. 8 fits pretty well. Come on. I really, I'm only pulling this part off because I don't want to break it. Pulling that off here. And it's keyed, so it'll actually only go back one way, which is good. All right, let's get this thing apart. That one was loose. Not a good sign. That one was loose. Not a good sign. Probably because of all the vibration of this thing. That one's snug. That was loose. Gaskets are oriented properly, at least on this one. And it doesn't move at all, so there's no way that would have worked. Let's see. actually does move back to my T8 so this is your uh, metering jet and metering diaphragm metering diaphragm metering jet so oh, that side not terrible Gaskets again are correct on this one on this side Reed valves are shut Let's see do they move at all? Yep So This gasket actually could be reused if it had to That one though that doesn't move at all that one's so without that, it would never run. Okay, and then this right here, that's your fuel pump, is what they call that. It pulls fuel from the fuel tank and into the carburetor, and it waits to be pulled in on the other side to that uh, metering jet. All of this is going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner, and let's see what happens. Let's put the carburetor... Oh, almost made a mistake. I'm going to put that in there um, because I want to pull that gasket off of it because I might need to use that gasket. And yeah, let's throw the jet in there as well, or the needle in there as well. Um, that block has it's a clear passage that doesn't need to be cleaned. Okay, let me get this in the ultrasonic cleaner and get it kicked off. I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. Pretty well cleaned out. Let's go ahead and just read this thing reassembled. Get the needle in there. Let's get the spring put back. Let's 
Let's see if this helps you guys. Maybe me too. Let's get the spring put back. Make sure that still moves up and down like it's supposed to. So the fuel pump side, the gasket should only go one way that makes sense. So all those bolt holes line up and then that reed valve covers a hole, that reed valve covers a hole. So that's the way that side goes. And then again with this gasket, you look at the body of it and everything will seem to line up. For me I have lines on here that are kind of telling me which way they go. Okay, and then while those gaskets are a little bit still damp, I usually just give them a pretty good squeeze. Because I'm reusing old gaskets. Will that one work? Hmm. I might be able to get it with using one of these gaskets from a whole nother kit. And if that's the case, does this gasket fit? Yep, that'll work. I just need to make sure that these two holes here are on this back side where they cannot interfere with this hole up here. So I'm just cheating the system a little bit. It seems to line up and it seems to cover all the holes. That ought to work. All right, let's see if we can get this vein back on. So the vein goes on like that. So it basically sticks out, goes to the side once it's closed. Small T8 to anchor it in place. Unless my return spring came out, um, mine is on that side on the hole. So as you're looking at the video here, so mine goes to that side. So this side went to the fuel tank, this barb. This one down here went to the primer bulb. O-ring gasket back in place. It's not really O-ring. It's a it's a gasket. It's flat, right? Shape of an O, but it's flat, so which means it's a gasket. Let's see. This should be going like that. Let's see. So this used to go. That was like that. And this one had a different angle. So let's get that. Those two fuel lines cut and get them back installed.
So the way that this uh, block is set up, there's a hole right here, and then it goes all the way through, and then it goes over to a passage. On here, there is a hole here that comes over here to this passage looking thing. So we know that that block goes on the upside, kind of like that, right? And it comes in that passageway, comes over and then reaches over to here. So the way they've got it set up is something like this. So that hole there lines up with that hole there, just like that. I'm going to attempt to hold this together. What I'm, tr what I have to do is get this vein to go back up in here. It should, there's nothing to stop it, so it should go right up in there. And then once I'm done, I'm going to be hooking up this spring, just like that. So let me see if I can get, you know, four hands into a spot that only takes one and a half sets. So I'll try to feed this up like that, so that the vein goes up in that hole. Now I'm going to try to get these bolt holes here to line up with here and here. And then once I'm done, I can then attach, hopefully, then I can attach that spring. Or I might end up attaching that spring in the process. So let's see what we can come up with. So the vein goes up first. Any resistance, stop, because like I said, it's fragile. Yeah, let's go and hook up the spring because we won't be able to reach it after. Goes right there on that metal tab into the groove. Whoops, I also have to get that hooked on first. And then we're going to try to move all that back together. That's convoluted. Yeah. It's crazy, this is a Tecumseh engine. They're usually pretty good about designing stuff. So all I can tell you is it felt right when it went together and the bolts are threading in. If we fire it up and it doesn't run, then we're going to realize that I did something wrong. So let's see what we got. It's nine millimeter, but it's one of those 12 point ones that when they're they're slightly off, they'll skip. Not a not a great set that I bought. I forget what brand it was. I don't want to say it. I'm not really sure, and I don't want to slam somebody that didn't build it. Actually, the name's right on there. It's a Cobalt. Now, I need to get some 25, figure out a 25 to 1 ratio. If this is roughly one gallon, all right, so here's what I got. Two ounces of my steel product makes it 50 to 1. So four ounces would make it 25 to 1, right? So. If I added a full two ounces to this gallon, I'm guessing it would make it, uh, if this was started out as 50 to one, make it 25 to one. So if I just go just slightly, slightly less than two ounces here, we might be all right. Here we go, let's try that. I said I'm way overthinking this because they're saying that uh, even the new 50 to one pre-mixes can handle a 25 to 1. And where that comes from is a lot of these uh, Chinese chainsaws that they're building are coming in and they're saying that they requires a 25 to 1 to run. And a lot of people are just running 50 to 1 and not having any problems. So the 25 to 1 for the old stuff used to go back to if you used 30 weight oil as your premix. Nobody does that anymore. Everybody does this.
and I'm not sure where the heck I'm gonna use this 40 to 1 anyway, so. What we can do though, is just do that and say it's 25 to 1. I mean, it's on the can, so it's gotta be true, right? Anyway. Let's see if I can get some fuel in this thing without making a giant mess. Might be, I, I think it's hunting. Uh, it might be the way they're supposed to run. It might have an electronic governor on it, you know, for the coil. But I'm gonna do a little bit of digging and see. All right, guys, this following day, when I was thinking about it, it occurred to me that I needed to check that spark plug I put in. And the one that I put in was a non resistor style spark plug accidentally. The one that actually was in this machine originally was the RC8. YJ something like that so I had actually put a 7 ES in there which is a non-resistor a uh, little bit hotter spark plug so I put the original one back in even though it didn't look that great I just want to see what it look how it runs with that original plug back in it like I said following day let's see what we got here give it a couple squirts I think we'll call that one for a win. Simple mistake, putting the wrong spark plug in. Troy built Tiller Edger Tecumseh TC2 carb rebuild. Garage sale find, a couple of carb parts and some fuel line. Hope you guys gotten something out of the video. Really appreciate you hanging out and I'll catch you guys on the next one.